One of the best things about the TBS Crossfire and Tracer system is that it almost always just works. It's simple, it's robust, and it's reliable. You, Crossfire, what are you doing? What does error code nine mean? What does error code nine mean? I just flipping flashed you to solve this flipping problem. You're so awesome. It won't go into binding. Cool, I'm so glad. I'm so glad I updated to the latest firmware. Why are you not powering up? What the flip? What in the Jiminy Christmas doesn't even power up now after flashing? Unbelievable. But I've noticed a big uptick lately in people who are asking me about how to recover their Crossfire system from a failed flash, or they're having problems with binding. There have been some issues with the latest firmwares that TBS has been putting out, which is causing receivers to lose bind and flashes to fail. And so what I wanna do in this video is show you the ultimate way to get back your system from a failed flash. It is almost 100% guaranteed that your system is not bricked, that it can be restored to full functionality. That's what we're gonna do in this video. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. This app right here is TBS Agent X, and you probably know this app as the preferred way to flash firmware and change settings on your TBS hardware, whether that's a TBS Crossfire module, a TBS Tango radio, or here I've got the TBS Mambo radio. We're gonna be working with all of this stuff in this video. And the first thing I want you to take from this video is that as of today and for the last, gosh, it seems like it's been as much as a year, there have been problems with the TBS Agent X app. And the problems manifest as like you flash your, your stuff and everything seems fine, but then like your receiver won't bind or it keeps losing bind. And TBS has said, don't use this app. What should you use instead then? What you should use instead is this TBS Agent M, which is a web-based app. It's the same app as TBS Agent X, but for some reason, the problem that TBS Agent X has isn't true in TBS Agent M. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna flash your, your radio or your module with this instead of TBS Agent X. So if I plug in my module here, We'll hear that sound that indicates a new USB device has been seen. And then what we'll need to do is hit this link USB device button. And because it's a web app, it doesn't automatically pick it up. The very first time you do link USB device, your web browser may ask you for permission to access your serial ports. Once you give that permission, then you won't need to do it again. And we'll pick this TBS Crossfire device and hit connect. Then we just can go into Crossfire Micro TX and we can go to firmware and we can choose firmware and flash firmware. Uh, just for completeness, let's do the same thing on my Tango. I'm gonna plug in USB-C here on the bottom of the radio. It's gonna ask me which of these options that I want and the one that we're gonna pick is USB agent. That's the, TV, that's the one that you use for flashing the radio. And once we do that, once again, we hit link USB device. We see TBS Tango 2, connect and we can flash one of two things. So for the TBS Tango and the Mambo, there are two things you can flash. One is the radio itself, the radio firmware, which is known as Freedom TX, and the other is the Crossfire or Tracer module. And in this case, if you're having problems with binding and so forth, the module is gonna be the thing you wanna flash. So we're gonna hit Tango 2 XF firmware, and then we can flash the module with the firmware we need. And the same would be true for the Mambo. The Mambo is exactly the same. Uh, so we're not gonna show that. So right now, if you have a Crossfire system and you are having trouble with it losing bind, with it staying bound or just getting it to bind, but you can actually get the radio to connect to TBS Agent M and flash, the fix for you is gonna be to flash it to the latest version using TBS Agent M, not TBS Agent X. And that's despite the fact that the version number may be the same. If you flashed it to the, whatever version with TBS Agent X, you still could have problems. It's the same firmware version. It's something about the flashing tool itself that is causing the problem. Now let's talk about firmware versions here because you can see that Crossfire has quite a few of them. And it's very important as of today that you be flashing firmware version 6.17. And the reason for that is that in 6.16, there was a bug it's unclear whether the bug was a Crossfire bug or a Betaflight bug, but the bottom line is in Betaflight 4.3, 
there is a bug with Crossfire 616 that causes random fail safes. So if you're flying Crossfire today, you absolutely need to be on 617 if, if, you're, for, if you're using Betaflight 4.3 uh, release candidate. Uh, but what if your device will not connect to USB? Like you were in the middle of a flash and for some reason the flash failed or got interrupted and now your device, maybe it doesn't even power up anymore. It's just like completely dead and doesn't work. There's a fix for that and it is something called bootloader mode. And a bootloader is a little piece of code that lets you flash the firmware even when the firmware has been corrupted or the flash has been interrupted. For the micro module to put it into bootloader mode, you hold down the button while you plug in USB. The module should be powered down when you do this. Uh, that may, hopefully that goes without saying, maybe it doesn't. When you do that, it will power up and it will have a fast flashing green LED and that tells you it's in bootloader mode. By the way, if you had a failed flash and you're getting a fast flashing green LED, that means it is failing over into bootloader mode on its own because it can tell that something isn't right. Once you've got it in bootloader mode, if we then hit link USB device, instead of TBS crossfire, we will see TBS bootloader and that's what we wanna see. Once you see TBS bootloader, you can connect and we can go in and we can flash the module. And I'm gonna go ahead and flash it this time. We'll choose 6.17 and update to v6.17, okay, and okay. Now you gotta wait, don't leave this tab, just wait and let it finish flashing. And then when it's done, you'll be on 6.17. That's how to restore function when you've got a device that has had a failed flash and is dead. Put it in bootloader mode and reflash it with the correct firmware. Now for the TBS Mambo and the TBS Tango, there's actually two different bootloaders in the radio because like I told you earlier, there's two different things in the radio that you can flash. One is the radio itself, its operating system known as Freedom TX, and the other is the module, the internal tracer or crossfire module, which has its own firmware. That's two separate firmwares that are flashed into two different parts of the radio, and therefore there's two different bootloaders, one for each of those things. So for the Freedom TX bootloader, I'm gonna hold down the page key on the Mambo, and I'm gonna plug in USB. And when I do that, it's gonna look like nothing happened. The screen will light up, but the radio won't actually boot up, and it won't show the charging indicator that it would normally show. Then I'm gonna hit link USB device. I'm gonna see TBS Mambo here and hit connect. And when I do that, I'll have the option of TBS bootloader. And when I hit firmware, I can go ahead and flash this to the latest firmware. Now, because I want you guys to succeed at getting your radio operational again, I need to show you a little hitch that I ran into while making this video. After finishing the main firmware flash, it told me to link USB device again, and this is normal. But when I hit the link USB device, button, the device was not there. What seemed to work for me was to unplug USB, plug it back in without putting the radio into bootloader mode and power the radio on normally, then select USB uh, agent uh, so that it would connect to TBS agent normally. Then I was able to finish the flash. Now I should warn you at this point that if you are just doing a normal update of your radio, to go to a newer firmware version. There are a few other steps you need to do in order to keep, like, not lose your models and settings. And the point of this video is just how to restore from a failed flash where maybe you've got nothing to lose. I've got another video that teaches you how to do a normal update of the firmware, and I'll put a link to that down in the video description, but I'm not gonna show those steps in this video because that's not the exact focus. Now, if your problem is the internal tracer module on the Mambo, the way to get to bootloader for that is to hold down the menu key instead of the page key while you plug in USB. And when I do that, I will once again see TBS bootloader, but this time the firmware will be the Crossfire firmware versions instead of the Freedom TX firmware versions. And I can just flash to 617 or whatever the latest is. And for the Tango, there is the same distinction of two different firmwares and two different bootloaders, one for the Crossfire module and one for Freedom TX, and they are accessed by holding down the F and the E button on the back of the radio while plugging in USB. The actual process of updating is identical to the Mambo, so we don't need to see it again. So that's how you unbreak your Crossfire module or radio. But after you do that, your receiver still might refuse to bind. In fact, your receiver might even be blinking some error code that doesn't even let it go into bind mode. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna recover the receiver. Before we do that though, if I just saved your radio from being bricked, could you go down and hit the like button? 
It would sure mean a lot. Okay, next up, the receiver. And I'm going to do that using this quad here, which some of you will notice has props on, but it also has a smoke stopper, which means that the motors cannot spin enough to cause any damage. The smoke stopper will cut it off, so don't freak out about the fact that I have props on. And the first thing you're going to try to do is just bind the receiver. Uh-huh. You see that? You see that green-red blink? There's something wrong with the firmware on our receiver. This is uh, the kind of situation that you're running into if you flash with TBS Agent X instead of TBS Agent M. Now, there are various blink codes the receiver could be giving you that, cause, that mean that it's got an issue. There's double blinks of green. There's a green-red blink. There, the bottom line is that the dang thing isn't working and it won't go into bind mode, and we need to do an emergency recovery on it. Here's how to do that. Each Crossfire receiver has stored in its memory a so-called golden firmware, a very old firmware version that is known to be 100% reliable and bug-free. And if you get a Crossfire receiver in a situation where for whatever reason it can't boot up or its firmware is corrupted, the emergency recovery procedure reloads that old golden firmware, they call it, and then you can rebind and reflash and get it back to proper functioning. And that is the workaround for any situation like we're running into here. The way to do the emergency recovery is to first power the receiver down, then hold down the bind button on the receiver. Now I want you to watch the LED status during this process very carefully because it's a little bit, uh, there, are, there are steps you have to do in exactly the right order. And if you don't do them in exactly the right order, then it won't work. So I'm gonna start by holding down the bind button with this tool and I'm gonna power up while holding down the bind button. And I'm gonna see the fast blinking green LED, which indicates that that step is correct. Then I'm gonna release the bind button for about one to two seconds. And then I'm gonna press it again. And I should get a double blink green LED, which will then transition to an even faster flashing green LED. At this point, the emergency update procedure has been initiated and we need to wait, and the sign that it's finished is gonna be that it goes back to slow blinking. Once it goes back from fast blinking to slow blinking, we can power cycle it again. Oh, now, we, ah, there we go, okay. So we initiate binding, and it asks update Nano RX, because it's got an old firmware. We're gonna go ahead and let it update the firmware, and when it's done, the bind should be complete. Once the emergency update finishes, you may find that it doesn't automatically rebind like mine did. You may need to power cycle the receiver once. You may need to press the bind button once. And in some cases, I've even had to redo the emergency update for I don't know what reason. The bottom line is that even if you run into a couple of roadblocks like you saw me run into in this video, going back to bootloader mode and reflashing firmware usually, eventually, fixes the problem. And I hope that it's fixed the problem for you. Um, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying. Patrons are the people who make all this possible. Not to disrespect you, because you're watching all the way to the end, which really helps the analytics. So I guess without you watching, none of this would be possible. But if you would subscribe or join my Patreon, $2 a month or more, it's up to you. Or at the very least, you know, leave a comment or click the affiliate links and do the show. Isn't it a beautiful day? Man, the lighting looks good out here. What's up, y'all? Out for a walk.